Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of 12 Million. I am Darren Jenkins, joined by my co-host Akbar Majid. What's going on, Akbar? What's good, Darren? What's good? Uh, this is good. This is this is officially our first wrap-up report that we're doing for our season. And this was a good this was a good a good season. Right, I mean, it was a very good season, very good pretty season. I mean, we put together, I think, a nice, solid group of people for our inaugural run. No, and, definitely, I think they came through. Like they definitely came through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they definitely came through, and it got stronger as the season went longer. No, definitely right. Yeah, no. disrespect to anyone who was up front, but this, I mean, when our season kicks off on Wednesday, which uh, May fifth, right? Um, it, we start strong to the hoop, and at right. the end of the game, we're hitting threes at a good clip. <laughs> definitely, definitely. definitely. <laughs> So hitting our stride going into the playoffs, right? That's right. <laughs> and speaking of the playoffs, um, I think everyone's going to want to listen to our episode that will be on the 19th, which um, will be featuring uh, the founder, executive director of the Black Fives Foundation, Claude Johnson. Oh, definitely. I think that was, yeah, that's going to be a good, that, that's, that was a good one, right? So that was a very good one, right? Um, yeah. I mean, they were all good. Um yeah. But just the historical, you know, information that he has and the things that they're doing, um, I think are amazing, right? Yeah. So it's, um, and it's very important for us to to be able to document, to be able to educate, to be able to share. Um, and even the work I think he's doing with Puma yeah. shows that the commitment to, you know, that hopefully, you know, this, this, this period isn't just a, a movement right. in time, but it's something that's sustained and right. Uh, and, they're lever- and, and the thing about it is, is that you know they're pr- they're um, they're you know preserving history by br- using today's brands and and athletes to kind of help do that, which is important. I think kind of help bridge that 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 historical gap. In, in the- right. Because so many young guys, um, they don't know all of the history of basketball as it pertains to us. And, you know, they you look, the NBA is a great league. Don't get me right, wrong. Yeah, definitely. But basketball was was happening way before the NBA showed up on the scene. Right. And we were involved in basketball way before we right. was even allowed in the right. NBA to play right. basketball, right? Exactly. Um and, and we've always been the entertaining part of basketball, right? Because right. even the things that Claude talked about were, you know, ba- how basketball was infused with a party afterwards, or right. orchestra that was part of the show. So, you know, we've always understood that it's the sports and entertainment right. of, the, of the business, right? Um, I mean, I, I don't know if you followed um, any of the NFL draft. Um, but just watching the show, right. it, I mean, that's a perfect example of sports. Um, what sports actually is? Sports is right. not, or it's entertainment, man. Right. Yeah, it's, it's the entertainment it's, business. It's the it business is. of entertainment, right? It's just through football, through basketball, right? And I think right. at the end of the day, no. As fans, we kind of take it too seriously, right? <laughs> 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 but we, it, there's definitely a disconnect between it. At the end of the day, it's still a business, right? Of entertaining people, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, so. And, and 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 for uh, many people, it is a way to escape, um, right? Their situations, and, right? Uh, 
we have to, I think it's important to, you know, I, I think what the Black Fives is doing is immensely important to, to, to the, you know, not just black, black basketball, not just basketball, but just understanding, you know, like, like what, what, what people have to do, in, you know, like that basketball is more than just a game for people. Right. You know, so, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that's going to be in the middle of the season and it's a good episode. Right. So you're going to be sure to save the date for so go back and watch that. Right. So yeah. it's kind of like to go back and watch that one. That was definitely in the middle of the season. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was definitely, but I mean, like you said, I mean, when the season started, it, you know, it was, it was good. It, it was, was good. good. Right. And it's weirdly, like I didn't expect what we got in the first episode to be honest. Right. Right. Yeah. So Dr. Camille Cohen, um, and the information that, that we received there and, um, and just the conversation I think was, yeah. um, robust and informational and you know, yeah. kind of stay off the screen <laughs> a little bit more than I would, I would tell you like, you know, I don't have a favorite episode, but this right. was, I, I really enjoyed that conversation mostly because you don't, like I told her, I don't right. hear this, that conversation. You don't hear people talking about eye health. Um, not at all, right. Not really. I, I, I don't recall ever hearing a podcast that's, that featured eye health. I was like, what? Right. Right. But it's so important, especially now that we are staying at home, doing these Zoom calls, um, on the internet so much, using your phone all the time. You right. know, that's a lot of strain on the eyes and God knows it. I'm wearing these things now. <laughs> I've always been wearing these things, but I did <laughs> Well, I caught up with you. I'm like, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like this was a podcast that you listen to it and you will uh, like you for you you're like what eyes i trust me there is a lot on this podcast for everybody to listen to right. and get some very 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 good advice on how to treat your eyes better than you are currently treating them right. Definitely. i can guarantee you're not treating them that well Right. And, you know, like, it's like one of the things that she mentioned, the eyes are kind of the, you know, kind of the keys of, into the soul of health, right? It kind of, the, the different diseases or different conditions that she right. that are able to be detected through your eyes, right? right. So it's... Um, and, and with COVID happening... Right. Um, with, with you not being able to get like So for what, six, eight months or so, a lot of people couldn't even go to a doctor's office because right. they were scared of what would happen to them sitting in the, in the in patient room because of COVID. Right. So your eyes really, like if you know what to look for, you can at least mm -hmm. get this, maybe I need to risk it. You know, I mean, right. yeah. you know. So well, those are important things to kind of know about your health, to kind of know key things to look at, to at least get an idea of how how you're doing. Right. Yeah. So she was she and she was funny. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So she, uh, you know, yeah. I think definitely with you know kind of the demand we put on kids nowadays, right, of letting them hear. Do something on your phone. Do something that's iPad. You know, <laughs> watch TV. Right? Lord forbid the, the virtual schooling. Right? I think she said yeah. two, two hours a day. Yeah. Right? And uh, so they all gonna need glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and um, you know, aside from the medical advice, she right. gave some pretty um, practical advice for, for those people who are trying to run a business as an entrepreneur right. uh, or trying to franchise or, you know, or someone who just wants to understand better how to operate better and be more successful um, in your business. Just a lot of good business sense conversation right. too. And you definitely have to appreciate her transparency. Right. Of just kind of yeah. talking through kind of her, her challenges of opening the business almost with a yeah. week or two be, a, before COVID hit and just yeah. kind of managing through that. So, 
Yeah, I love how she's like, uh, she was like, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and how he's just like, nah, nah, we good, me and you. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, because so often when you, you know, you read certain stories or you read certain books or you hear certain people talk about the entrepreneur journey, it's all good. Right. Right. It's all it's like, it's true. Right. Yeah, it's you know, it's give us the real story. Like right. the the days that you were like, Man, I do not want to do this shit anymore. Right. right. Or right. oh, why did I you know, what was I thinking? Right. Right. So um yeah, you definitely it, appreciate it. Close to, you know, and then you know, like cause those stories are what really help a person, right? Right. I can't be helped by everything went great and I everything was wonderful and right. I had all the money in the world and I made tons. Mm -hmm. That how's that help me, man? Right. Yeah. <laughs> because one is not real, right? It's not so, real. Right. And so yeah. So. So it was it was good to have that her was good. Yeah. On, on the show, mm -hmm. um, we we skipped over our kind of our official start. Which was Cam it was Cameron, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. If he's listening to this podcast. What's up, G? <laughs> um, Cameron, I've known for quite some time, and um, he's he was always such a just the nicest guy, and mm -hmm. um, success that he's had with his documentary couldn't be couldn't happen to a nicer dude and to hear like all the things that went into making of the documentary it was right. kind of cool yeah it was definitely and you always see something you know to, to talk to people who really seem to love what they're doing right and yeah. you know, him being a jazz artist and being able to to create a documentary around one of his his heroes yep is awesome right so it's um, yeah Mm -hmm. A man and his trumpet, the Leroy Jones documentary. I didn't, I, you know, I like jazz. I yeah. had not heard of Leroy Jones, and that's my. I, I feel bad about that, but um, after watching the documentary and just l listening to his play, him him playing, dude, it's just f a phenomenal trumpet player and. Um, I was it was it was good to see that, that you know you know it's funny because jazz is jazz is kind of like one of these arts where a lot of these guys toil in anonymity a lot of times and they're so brilliant and a lot of them came from the southern states and um, didn't get a lot of notoriety until after the, either after they were gone so it was great yeah. he was able to capture this while Leroy is still here and then can get the word straight from him. Right. Yeah. To celebrate our heroes while they're still here, right? As yep. opposed to uh, after they're gone and yeah, yep. they get the recognition um, while they were here. So I think that was very good. I mean, it's, yep. yeah. And that's, that, that's a, you know, that was a, you know, that was a, that was an episode kind of a long time coming because me and Cameron had been talking about jumping on a podcast here and jumping right. on. But he was so busy with the film. And then afterwards, the um, the marketing and the, the film festival run type stuff. Right. So it was kind of hard for to pin him down to kind of do stuff. So it was good to finally get him on the show. And, and uh, you know, you got to meet him. In, in right, definitely, yeah. Cool. So, um, but uh, our, 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 Guess that um, I was most interested in meeting <laughs> was this 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 person who knows Akbar quite well. <laughs> they are brothers, yeah. but he Majid. Um, I seen all like you should show me all of his work, all the different things he's done, and I was just like, he's he's so good, and it was great to finally actually hear his process and talk to him and get the meat and um, hear all, everything he's doing. Well, that was, you know, that was this always interesting to kind of to be in a formal setting and kind of talking to him, right? You know, like you said, we're brothers, but right. you know, our conversations are different when it's 
Yeah, I was going to say how we got kind of the brother brother conversation. Right, right. You're, you're not asking them about <laughs> you know operational right in the process of how does he come up with you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> no so you know but so it was also good to to have that conversation to hear the formal process right yeah. you know because there are days where I sit back and say wow this you know this really is. You know, my, my my younger brother, I won't say little, but my younger brother, right, where it's like that he has become, you know, in his own right, you know, very successful, um, uh, accomplished um, in his own right and, and doing his thing, right? So it's um, like, where did that come from, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you get that from, right? Like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah. So that that was definitely a cool, definitely cool episode and a a very cool, um, yeah, interview that we were able to have with him. And just you know, um, and and just so everyone knows, when when we do these shows, um, we our shows are conversations with these people. We, we're not there asking them like these crazy questions that you'll see on talk shows. This is not, this is not a talk show. This is, this is us wanting, asking people that we want to have conversations with to come on and talk to us. About their process, about their success, about their feelings, about their, you know, uh, failures. Um, right. So, like you said, it's just it's just a, a, a conversation about you know, what's going on With in the that. world and their thoughts about that, right? So, um, uh, and from their perspective, right? Right. Uh, because I think we get, I think when we 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 approach that approach in that manner, we end up getting a lot more than we expect. Right. Um, and it's honest. It's not. It's not made up nonsense. They're not spouting quotes out of a book or anything. They're really just kind of giving you an insight into where, you know, maybe something that they were thinking when they were doing something or, or a, maybe something that a challenge they had to overcome to, to get where they were at or, or, you know, offering some light on their process that might come and be fruitful for someone else down the road. Um, and, you know, I, I, that's why I love doing these podcasts because I think it helps everybody else, but it helps me too. Cause I like, yeah. I hear some really just some fantastic stuff. And our last, um, our last guest uh, of the season I think we got more from her than we expected. Oh, definitely. I mean, we got, I mean, she, no, she definitely gave us a lot more than we expected, right? Like, it's um, such a pleasant way. I no, was just definitely. Like, it's almost like it's like, wait a minute, did, did you just? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but to your point about kind of how we've, you know, kind of how the show, you know, the show is kind of conducted is, it seems like there comes a point in, you know, particularly the interviews we've done so far, the conversations we've had so far, where it's almost like something clicks, and they're like, oh, so we're just talking. Wait a minute, so this is just a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that what we uh, we're doing? That okay, cool. So let's just talk then. All right, yep. <laughs> we all just sitting on the couch and we just having the conversation. We're just having the conversation, right? You know? It's funny, and the light you could see, uh, we, you can see the light go on, <laughs> right? <laughs> like they just realize, oh, oh, uh, this is just conversation. Oh, okay, okay, right. okay. Yeah. okay. You know, so yeah, it, because so, so you talk about Jasmine Horn, like so that was one where. Not saying that I was so a little anxious about, right? Because it's right. almost like, or where do we, how do we engage her? Right. You know, you know, you, you do a little research. It's like, oh wow, like she's, you know, on the cusp of, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, us looking back and saying she's gonna be a jazz great, right? Yes. So it's right. like, um, but then it was like seven, ten minutes into it, it's like you saw that light, boom. And it's like, oh, okay, so 
we could just talk like we've known each other for for years, right? And it felt like it, right? It was just right. like, okay, this yeah. is cool. this is happening. Okay, this is happening. Right. Yeah. And and we respect people that you know. I I respect that opportunity very much. You know, like I, right. you know, um, I feel like she trusts she trusted our our process. Right. And um, I'm very grateful that she came on. And she's a Grammy nominated, two time Grammy nominated artist, man. Right. I mean, you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want, I don't. I, don't, I, mean, I want, so, I mean, we had, like you said, Grammy nominated artists. We had award winning film director. We had, you know, award winning visual artists. All of actually, uh, all of everybody are very, very accomplished in their own right yeah. now. And so, the diversity of the conversations were, you know, mm. it's, yeah, it was pretty good. So, it's gonna be, gonna be tough to, to see how we, <laughs> we, we continue with this in season two. I don't know, we're gonna, I don't know how we can top. Well. To be, it's not even about topic. I think it's just continue, keeping the momentum going, right? So to be frank, so we like so for a lot of people who don't know, like we when we shoot our shows, we we shoot a bunch of them all at the same time, right? And then we schedule we re- release them on a schedule. So we're we're we already are. Halfway through, almost halfway through season it's two, a quarter, a quarter through, quarter season through. Two. yeah, yeah, and so we already know at least a few of our guests who are going to be in, and the momentum keeps going. Let's, 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 let's put so it that good. way. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> right. Our last. It's, it's surprising, and like you said, and surprising, right? So it's they're good, but they're like. Like so, I even you know kind of after the show some of the conversations we've had, you know, mm-hmm. even with season one and season some some season two, it's like, wow, that was good, right? Yeah. Like, like after like after the show, we stop and we have conversations with our guests. Mm-hmm. Even our guests were like, "Damn, we should have recorded this," <laughs> and I'm right. like, hey, "Don't worry about that. I got that." Right. Because <laughs> it's so good. It's like you know, it's very right. you know. Having those opportunities right now are very rare, like because no one's meeting in person really as much anymore. So the best thing, like I'm very happy that we have the opportunity to do this over video and have this conversation. Right. And it feels like people have gotten a little bit more used to doing that that process. So it, the conversation's not awkward anymore. Right. And then once we've had this long, you know, our, our, our show's about an hour long or so. Once you've had an hour conversation, that after conversation, it's kind of like the after party. It's right. Like, yeah. It's the after party. Right. And, um, it, you know, I, that's, I can't even explain that. The, like our last, the last show that we recorded, um, the after party was quite good. Right. Yeah. So much, so much information in this, this past, you know, mm-hmm. in the after party is almost like, mm-hmm. maybe we might need to have another component to it. Mm-hmm. So that might be something that people might need to watch out for, or yeah. look out for. We might have the after, right. So the after Marvel, show, right. Marvel-esque type stuff coming <laughs> exactly, in. Exactly. Right. Definitely. So, so stay tuned on that. But yeah, I mean, Akbar, was there anything that you like? Was there anything you learned from this? Po- like, did you take anything out of any of these podcasts that you uh, thought was interesting? I know I did. Well, uh, I mean, it's, there's so much out of each one, right? Um, I mean, I think the main thing is I think we've accomplished what we set out to accomplish, right? I mean, yeah. I think, you know, dope shows. Well, dope shows, but also the diversity of black voices, right? So yeah, it's, uh, and, I, and there's so many of us doing so many yeah. dope stuff, great stuff. Yeah. Um, that you know it goes to show and you know there's a you know, and even after shows it was like oh 
you should talk to this person. You should talk to this person. I'm going to connect you with this person. This person will love, you know, to talk to you or but better yet, you know, a brother, a sister, somebody who's doing something great that um, people need to know about, right? So, um, well, I would say. So what did you, Kyla, what did you learn or get out of? Well, um, first, I learned that I, I need to make sure I'm using my eye drops more. Uh, <laughs> oh, definitely learn to, to turn the phone off 30 minutes before you go to bed, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I learned that no matter how, where these individuals came from and what industries they're in, they're all, um, what I would, they all, you know, like, <laughs> There are many roads, but they all lead the same place. And it's like, to be honest, it's this thing here, you know, that really sets the pace for whether good things happen to you or not. And I think that to me was the thing I took took from all of these people, which was they all work hard. They all struggled at some point in time. They all are, you know, very passionate about what they're doing but they all have maintained a sense of dignity about themselves yeah definitely definitely and how they treat people is kind of been like the foundation of how things have been done for them right. and um people need to take that i think take that and, and carry it forward that it, you got to treat people well because can't, like that karma will bite you in the ass, man. Let right. me tell you. Yeah. Bite you in a strong sense of self, right? right. Um, even though you know, there's a, there's trials and tribulations and, you know, one thing I think was very consistent with almost all of them was they didn't know the answers when they started. Right. Right. And to your point, it was just, you know, hard work, um, committed to, you know, trying to find the best outcome. And and, and, and the journeys continue, right? So, you know, um, and I think that's very important for us to hear that, to see that. um, Because a lot of times if you don't, you know, if you don't see something, you don't think it's attainable, right? Right. and that's really kind of like our one of our also our missions on the show, which is to show these these people, show these examples of, of success, and to because as us right. as color, it's important for us to always see that there are people out there doing it, and you can achieve it too. It's going to right. that it's. Yes, it's hard, but it was it's hard for everyone. And right. you know what I mean? Like, don't feel like you're the only one out there. Right. So, well, oh, and on that note, what I will say is that if you are doing something interesting, fascinating, fun, um, life-changing, if you have a startup business or an organization that you are, um, are extremely passionate about and think other people would be passionate about it too, be sure to let us know. And it may just end up on our show. Right. Definitely. You can go up to our website, our new website, by the way, we didn't mention that. <laughs> at Just 12, drop. Just drop. 12, that's right. Just drop 12 million dot live. You can go up there and send it to us via our contact form on there. And, or if you want, and you want to do it the newfangled way, Go over to Instagram, follow us, send us a message. Right. Exactly. So, um, definitely. So, you are listening to 12 Million. Uh, my name is Akbar Majid. I'm here with my co host, Darren Jenkins. What's up? Well, should we get to that part in the podcast where we ask, normally, we ask our, our guests um, for recommendations of books that, um, they either thought were worth other people reading or were impactful in their lives and somehow. And so I guess we're going to ask that same question to each other on each time we 
we do our wrap up show. So, so I let you go first since I asked gonna be asked the questions. So, uh, yeah. If so, you have a recommendation or a, a, a good book you've read recently, I, or reading, or um, where? Let me just. I gotta get the name here. Uh, so, um, there is a book. Um, so I. I belong to, and I'm going to give them shouts out. I belong to a, a group called Stealth Mode, which is um, an organization of black startup founders and black VCs, and um, so in you know entrepreneurs. Uh, and um, well, they have authors on there. A lot of people have, who have written, written books. Or, and so there was a book by somebody on on the show on on the on the group that I actually bought and it's actually really good I actually bought another copy and gave it to my nephew it's called uncomfortable conversations with a black man oh wow and, um it's written by Emmanuel Ocho who um, used to also be an NFL football player for the Cleveland Browns, who is now an analyst for Fox Sports. And um, it's a great book. Um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a great primer on race and racism. And, um, and it's a good book to give young black men who are like, you know, I'd say high school, to college age. Um, it's just a fantastic book. Um, I definitely recommend people grab it. Cool, cool. All right. So I guess I'm up. So I guess a, a good book I recently just finished is X, a novel by Yasa Shabazz, um, the daughter of Malcolm X. Um, Wow. So um, it's interesting. I was in um, Brooklyn, I guess a year or so, a year ago, and I was um, waiting outside. And, you know, there's these, these book stands, kind of these pop up book stands of people who are selling books, right? So it's not a formal, but just yeah. books as they had. And, you know, so I was looking at it, and the gentleman was like, hmm. You know, and I'm always, you know, I'm a, a Malcolm X learner, as I was called, right? Um, which is, you know, it's interesting that so much of what he talked about and so much we're dealing with now still applies, right? So, um, but X really looks, explores kind of through his journals, you know, so it's almost like a journal kind of of him speaking kind of his life from Lansing to Boston mm. to New York. So it's almost the journey of Malcolm Little to becoming Malcolm X. So it almost ends with him becoming Malcolm X. So it's really um, kind of journaling his, his journey to, you know, you know, all the things that, you know, he sees experiences that mm. takes him to become an ex, right? And you no, know, but I think the unique thing that you notice or you realize is the consciousness part was always implanted in him through his parents. You know, right. his parents were f followers and supporters of Marcus Garvey, right? So that was you know, so that was always in him. But through you know, we love talking about he was this, he, he was that before he became Malcolm X, which was right. good. But the foundation was already there. Right? Right. He just had to tap into it. So, so that's a, a very good one. Um, good. Well, was quick reading for me. So, good yeah, choice. So good choice. Definitely check that out. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to drop one more because I only because uh, this was actually a this this I think is more of a the fo the photos in this book were really. Um, kind of cool it's called you next reflection right. reflections in black barbershops oh wow um, okay by antonio johnson it's really good like if you open up the book you're just sitting there staring like looking at all these different 
beautiful black black and white photographs and stories that that are you know that image like of things that happen in black barbershops um and because you know we all know black barbershops are where movements happen man oh definitely <laughs> i mean everything happens good, in- good bad and indifferent right it happens in the end, right? exactly <laughs> yeah. so conversations that you know that solve the world problems mm-hmm. occur in barbershops right? in barbershops mm-hmm. so I, I i just when i saw the name of the book i was like oh i gotta check this out and i bought it i had to buy it it was right. good it was good cool, so, cool. definitely I have, to, I have to check that out so <laughs> Dude, this was um, a good season. Definitely look forward to you know season two and um, and beyond, right? So I think beyond, we're- yeah, we yeah. we got all kinds of plans coming up for definitely, yeah. So definitely, you know, keep a watch, keep a listen um, to what's to come. Like, Go up like to that. our website and sign up to our our uh, mailing list so you can get notices for when we are doing um, events and right. special podcasts and different promotions. And we'll, at some point in the near future, we'll even be having some nice T-shirts and swag that people can support their support um but at the very least just drop us a line up there let us know you're listening right Uh, definitely if you have an uh an idea for the show or a suggestion for a guest you want us to try to get let us know because right you're all interested in what you what you information you just want us to drop right i believe we're going to start a new segment called the drop Yep. Um, next season. So yep. when we do our show, our our show, we're gonna do a section called the drop where we're just gonna drop information and things, good things that are going on in the community, right? Dropping knowledge on you. Definitely, definitely. Um definitely look forward to that. Yeah, I think that's that'll be that's gonna be a good a good little segment, I think. Um and then of course you can follow us on podcast um, on Instagram uh, at Twelve Million Podcast. We'll be we also on Facebook, right? We're on Facebook at the same thing. Twelve, 12 million podcasts. So. Yeah. so you can follow. You can us. find us. Yes, and if you can't find us on Instagram or Facebook, you go up to our website. All of our social media links up there. So, Definitely. yep. Um, I guess that wraps it up for our season one. Cool. Um, Akbar, you have anything coming up next that you want to let anybody know about or? Um, just, you know, spring is coming. We're in the middle of spring, um, moving into the summer months, um, trying to figure out how this, you know, this pandemic is, is panning out, even though the world, well, America seems to, uh, we're over it. We're going to get back out to, you know, doing what we're doing, but, you know. We know how that is. Yeah, we know how that's going to end too. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. <laughs> so, uh, imagine that, but you know, we have a couple of eyewear collections coming out this. Um, yeah, it's a, this it's summer, a, right? So this is yeah. this is the time, um, and may have something even with one of our guests. Oh. Uh, so you know, you know, there's something to look out for in season two. We just we just don't know, right? Uh-huh. So, um, but you know, it, we could be you know, you could follow. That at Rise Rad Eyewear on Instagram um, or riseartdesign.com to kind of see the latest in that. But awesome. Just, how about yourself? Um, so I we're getting back into the swing of things on the Download Podcast. So Chris okay. will be back um, interviewing tomorrow. I think we're doing um, Snatch. Okay. Um, which I've never seen, so I'll be watching that sometime tonight. Yeah, I, I know. What? I, what? You tell Chris because he will just lose his freaking mind. That I, is that is a true cult classic. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so we're doing that, and um, and then drop the mic is coming back from hiatus soon i'm just working on a couple of guests to kind of for that um 
for that show. I think um, I think uh, first show is the executive producer of the Emmy Awards. Okay, cool. So I think I'm not sure. I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> so cool, cool, cool. Otherwise, like you said, just trying to stay safe and sane in this right. in this seemingly let's get it over with post COVID world. Right. <laughs> so. Um, whatever. I, I'm gonna still wear my mask, man. Oh, definitely. So, everybody, uh, stay safe. Stay safe. Get your vax. Get get your vaccination. If you're wearing a mask, use Pfizer or Moderna. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, where's your mask, please? Um, still, still, and, and and where you can still do six foot of social distancing. social distancing. I know. It's not you can't do it everywhere, but try to do it when you're when you can. So, yeah. all right. Well, I think that wraps it up. Um, I'm Darren Jenkins. I am Akbar Majid, and this was Twelve Million. We look forward to seeing you next season. Thanks a lot, everyone. Peace. Peace.